Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. You might remember an article that I wrote back in May when Microsoft announced some great new features that are coming to power virtual agents. Uh, my video was pretty, not super specific, it was more of like an overview of some of the capabilities, but this is actually now available today in preview. This started, the preview started November 10th, so you can start to play around with some of those features. So in this particular video, I'm gonna touch upon some of those features in a little bit more detail, so definitely stick around right after this. There isn't anything that you really have to do in order to access the preview. There's nothing that you need to turn on or anything like that. But you do notice that the environment looks a little bit different, right? When you log in, you can also see I have a chat bots uh, area here now that is listing me all of my chat bots in this environment. So if you open up an existing chat bot that you created in the uh, legacy experience, you'll notice that there's a couple of buttons here, right? Try the new preview directly from up top. And we have a try to preview directly from here as well. So if I click any of those buttons here, this is kind of cool because this is going to allow me to actually either start with a new bot or I can actually make a copy of my current bot that I'm using in the legacy experience and I can convert that into the new experience. So this is not going to do anything to your existing bot, right? This is literally just making a copy and, um, and then you can use that in that preview. Now I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that, but if that's what you want to do, you can give it a new name and then you can hit create on here. So let me open up that chat bot. You will actually see that once that copy has been made and pushed over, so to speak, to that new preview, you will also notice that here in the name as well. You can see here in parentheses, the word preview has been added to that. Now I created an article and a video on this, on this new preview feature for Power Virtual Agents already in May but there are some features that I didn't cover and also my coverage was very high level. So what I'm going to do is dive a little bit deeper in some of these capabilities within this preview. So one of them is the ability to bring in options from a list variable when the bot asks a question. So let me quickly explain what I'm talking about. So normally, when we ask a question in Power Virtual Agents, we can show certain options to the customer to choose from, right? Those are our multiple choice options. So let me very quickly kind of pull that up. I'm gonna create a new topic. Right, we have our trigger phrases, blah. There you go, I'm gonna ask a question. And then I'm gonna say these are multiple choice options and I can say, option one, oops, let me copy this, option two, etc. And those are going to be the options that are shown. So I'm going to say, how are you? And now let's go and kind of test this. I'm going to save this. And let's trigger this one. So I have option one, option two, but again, these options, they're kind of hard coded, right? So with this new feature, we can actually bring in options from another application. We can do that within Power Virtual Agents by calling an action. So this means that the options that we then show to the customer in this chat, these guys that you see, option one and two, 
are now going to be dynamic. So I'm sure that you understand how crazy beneficial this is going to be because this means that we're never going to have to manually update these options again, right? Because we are pulling them in using an action and using some filtering in that action as well. The second reason that I think this is a great feature is because this is going to be very helpful when it comes to using an action like a Power Automate flow from within Power Virtual Agents to create records in other applications, right? So this could come into play when you want to create a new case and you want to populate the subject field on that case, right? When you're creating that case during the chat. So the way that we could accomplish this is by feeding all of those rows in that subject table, right? That lives in Dynamics 365 customer service. We can push those into Power Virtual Agents and then we can show those as the options that the customer can choose from while they're chatting with your bot. And then once they click on any of those options, right, that, that subject, then we can call a flow to create that new case and to populate the subject field on that case. Now, the scenario that I'm actually going to show you here is where I have some custom fields on a case and that's pointed at a custom table where I'm, I'm basically storing category values. So for each case, I want to see, hey, what category is that case? So let me kind of show you the custom table that I created, which is a drop down values table. So here we are in Dynamics 365 in the customer service hub, and I'm going to search for my drop down values. So this is my custom table that I'm just gonna, I'm actually using this in a couple of different ways, but I'm also storing my active case type. So you can see here that I have parent categories, right? I have billing issues, I have service, product issues, inquiry, etc. And then below that, I have these child case types. So if I would, for example, open the service, case type, you can see here all of the child cases below that. The, the way I've done that is I actually have a lookup here, which is a lookup to the same drop-down value table. So if I open up my HVAC issue here, you will notice that the parent category is set to service. Now, the way that this works in conjunction with cases, let me go back here, or I'm actually, let me go back here to my cases. So if I open up a case, you'll notice that I have a category and a subcategory. So if my category is set to service, then you'll notice my subcategories are only those child subcategories that have a parent of service, right? So whatever is selected in my category field. If I select product issue, now I'm only going to see the subcategories that are children of whatever is set in my category field, in this case, the product issue. So that's kind of how I have set up my custom table uh, in Dynamics 365 for customer service. So now that you kind of understand the setup of these drop down values, these categories within the case table, how awesome would it be if we could use these categories and these subcategories? right inside of power virtual agents how great would it be if we can just grab this category or the list of these categories right these parent categories that i just showed you and show those values inside of power virtual agents so i'm going to go ahead and start a new topic and of course you have to enter a trigger phrase here first i'm just going to say start my pva because this is just for testing purposes right now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to send a message. Again, this is just so that I know that when I'm triggering this topic, that this is the correct one. And that's why I wanna show that message first. Obviously you wouldn't have to do that necessarily. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call an action 
And this is that flow that's going to pull in those drop down values from Dynamics 365. So I'm going to click get call a flow and I'm going to select the get drop down values flow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this this particular variable, right? So I'm going to call this category list. And you'll notice here that this is going to come in as a string. So what that means is I'm not going to get the list of those drop down values nice and neatly in a table. I actually have to do something afterwards to turn that into uh, a table. So let me quickly show you what I mean by that. I'm not going to discuss in this video how I built this flow. I will actually do that in next week's video, but I do want to show you the values that are being passed back to Power Virtual Agents from Power Automate. So I'm just going to open up one of the flows that ran earlier and then you can kind of see the values that were passed back to Power Virtual Agents. And this is what we're getting passed back. It's probably easier actually to show you that in the Compose. So these are all of my categories, right? Those parent categories. But as you can see, it's being passed back as a string, right? And then you can see that it's actually separated here by these commas. And so that's what I need to do. I need to go ahead and split all of these values out. And I can do that by utilizing the split function in Power FX. So let me go ahead and show you how we can do that. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the set a variable function here or, or set the variable node, I should say, which is also a new feature, right? That's part of this preview. What I can do here is I can actually create a new variable or set an existing one. But what I'm going to do here is I want to create a new one. I'm, a, I'm going to call this categories, categories. I could also say categories, table or whatever I want to, whatever I want to name that. Now at this particular time, you can see that we don't know the data that's going to be passed into this variable, right? That's why it shows unknown. So the next thing what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use a formula to, to change this data, right? We, we know that this came in as a string separated by commas. So I want to go ahead and separate them into individual values and then store that as a table. So I'm going to go here to formula and you can even kind of make this a little bit bigger as well. And then you can kind of see uh, some examples here, right? So what I want to do is I want to split from the topic and do, oh, this is actually topic dot. And I want to split that category list, right? And then I want to separate that by that comma. That's how I'm going to split that out. This is very similar to when you're using text to columns in Excel, right? If you have um, all of that data separated by a comma or a different, a different character, you can split them out by using that particular function in Excel. And you can kind of see here that it's now saying, okay, this looks good. So let's go and enter, enter that. So you can see here that I'm splitting the category list, right? Within this topic, this is that category list that we're now splitting out. And then I can use that in a question. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to say, what is your case regarding? What is your, oh, what is your case regarding? I'm trying to copy and paste it from my other screen here. There we go. No, nope. doesn't want to do it. Let's try it one more time. What is your case regarding? But instead of multiple choice options, I actually want to grab those options from a list variable, right? And then it's going to tell me, okay, well, which list variable? Well, remember, 
it was this categories table. Did you also notice that this is no longer shown as unknown? It's actually recognizing that these values are going to be in a table. So I can go ahead here and I'm going to look for my categories, right? That's this guy, this variable, which is that table. And then I can save my response as a different variable. Let's go ahead and say we're going to call these case category, right? Because we can use this later on when we want to use a flow uh, to create that case category. And then that's really all that we have to do here. So let me go ahead and, and save this first. Test drop down. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to refresh my test bot here so we can rerun this. There we go. Let me get your options. This is correct. So now it's kicking off that power automate flow. And look at that. Here are all of my different options. Now, again, the neat thing about this is that, of course, we want to be filtering on these values also based whether or not these records or these rows are active, right? So if I would go back into Dynamics 365 and I would deactivate one of those, then it should just bring me those active options. So I want to go back here to, um, to Dynamics 365 and I'm going to go ahead and deactivate the inquiry option. And then I want to run this again to make sure that this works. So here we are back in the customer service hub. I'm going to my inquiry category. I'm going to deactivate that. And again, keep in mind, obviously this will only work if you actually are filtering on just the active records, right? In that drop down table. And that's all configured in your Power Automate flow. So now let's go back to Power Virtual Agents and see if it is exactly doing what we're hoping it is going to do and not include this inactive dropdown value. So I'm going to refresh this. And it is now getting those dropdown values. And look at that. That inquiry option is no longer there because we did filter out to only show us those drop down values that are in an active state. So here you can kind of really see the value of this, right? This is going to change depending on how I'm filtering out this data in Power Automate. So I won't have to go back in here to my questions to make sure that my options are actually showing the correct values. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.